When you see a believer who is spiritually intelligent, it doesn't matter the gate of hell that comes against that believer. The believer will always overcome because by being spiritually intelligent, the person knows what to do and what not to do. Tell me about to be spiritually smart. Spiritually smart believers, they may not have details, but they have a way of knowing. I sense in my spirit that something is not right. And then they begin to inquire. When you see believers with spiritual understanding, they behave in an astounding way. They behave differently. They know that in the midst of all the battles, they are able to understand that victory has been given to them. Peace has been given to them. Joy has been given to them. Favor has been given to them. Jesus went on the cross of Calvary. Are you following? Shed his blood for our sins. He received on his body stripes and by his stripes. So when you are sick, what do you say? I am strong. You know, when we talk like that, you know what people think? You know where. You're not going to talk, say you know where. You say you are strong. Say you are weak. No, the Bible says, learn the weak. Say, now the reason why we refuse to say, I am sick, is because sickness is not your reality. Sickness is not your reality. The truth of God's word is your reality. Lift up your two hands. I think you should lift up your two hands for this.
Somebody lift up your voice in thanksgiving unto him this morning. Remember the wondrous things he has done for us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Father, we bless your name. Can I hear you? Thank you, Jesus. You are good and you are good forever. We bless your name this morning. In Jesus' name we are worshipped. Brethren, can we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? He's a good God. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome everybody to church this morning. This is our glorious Sunday service. And God is going to be manifesting his glory in our lives today in Jesus' name. Right now, we're going to be giving to God to say, Lord, thank you for your goodness in our lives. Our thanksgiving offering. Hallelujah. We give that to say, Lord, we can never give enough, but we recognize your goodness in our life. We recognize that you indeed are a good God. Hallelujah. If we're ready with it, let's just lift up our hands to God this morning. Father, we are saying thank you. For our families, we say thank you. For our businesses, we say thank you. For everything you're doing, even in Nigeria, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Somebody celebrate the goodness of the Lord. If God is good to you, celebrate his goodness. I can hear you. Somebody scream. Hallelujah. You are good and your message is forever Hallelujah You are good and your message is forever Hallelujah And God is good and his message is forever Hallelujah You are good and your message is forever Good God, I am sure you serve a good God. Aha, my God is a good God. Yes, He. My God is a good God. Yes, He. He lift me up. I say, lift you up. As God lift you up, Hallelujah. He lift me up. He lift me up. He lift me up.
30 seconds, so celebrate the name of the Lord with a clap. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord with a clap. Father, we honor you. Amen. Our eternal Father, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. As a family, as a people called and saved by your grace, we honor you. Thank you. We ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that in this service, our God, you will visit us in a unique way. Father, we pray that in this service, our eyes will be opened by the reason of your word to know, to obey, and to become all that you desire of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I pray for everyone who is part of the service here on site and those online. I pray that the God of heaven, by the reason of you being part of this meeting, will bless you. We visit you. We cause every impossibility in your life to become possible. Yeah. I pray that in this meeting today, someone will receive a divine revelation. Yeah. That will transform your life into a testimony. Yeah. That will transform your life into an envy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Will you celebrate the name of the Lord again as we take your seat this morning? Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Will you look at someone by your right and by your left with a lovely smile and tell the person, good morning, I'm glad you are in church this morning. 
and tell the person, my God will do something special in your life. Don't say it like you are not sure. Say it with all the confidence you have. Say, my God, my God will do something, will do something special, special in your life, in, your life. In, this in this service. How do you receive that? Yeah. I welcome every one of you and I know that the Lord will truly bless you today in Jesus' name. As you are well, a few days from now, we will be coming together as church family to say to God, thank you. Of course, thank, Thanksgiving is what we do every day. But this time, we are coming together collectively to say, God, thank you. But let me add this question. Does it deserve our thanks? You are in this meeting, I want to ask you this question. Do you have any reason to give God thanks? If you have a reason, shout thank you, Jesus. No, don't say it because I ask you to. If you truly have a reason to say, God, thank you, shout it convincingly, personally. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'll be discussing the topic which I titled, Thanksgiving, God's Kingdom Principle. You know, Hosea 4 verse number 6 told us that God's people perish for the lack of knowledge. But I believe God for someone that you will not be in the list of those that perish. Amen. To be perished means to be destroyed. The word thanksgiving for us as church people is not an unfamiliar word. It is something we are used to. It is something we do, if not every day, but most of the times. But not very many believers know what Thanksgiving truly is. And so in this meeting this morning, I will do my best by the help of the Holy Spirit to give you step by step of what Thanksgiving is and why we offer Thanksgiving to God as we are told by the word of God. I want to believe God for someone that our forthcoming Thanksgiving will be to you a Thanksgiving with a difference. Yeah. Of course, you may have been offering thanks to God, but I'm sure that doing it with a, a good understanding of what it is will help you to make the most of it and receive the blessings that follows in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget we are discussing Thanksgiving, God's kingdom principle. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 18. Please, if you can, let's read together. One to go. Give thanks in what? In all, in all what? Circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks at what time? In all circumstances. And it went further to say, it is God's will for us who are in Christ Jesus that we should give thanks how many times? In all circumstances. Are you still there? Now we are looking at Thanksgiving, God's kingdom principle. How many of you are citizens of God's kingdom here? Amen. If you are, please say that amen convincingly. Amen. The word principle is an English word. And the Webster dictionary gave us the meaning. Principle means a basic truth that determines an action that produces a predictable outcome. I'd like you to be very attentive. When you say something is a principle, you can call it a principle or a law. It's a fundamental requirement that determines an action and also an outcome. That is, when you apply a principle, the principle will give you a predetermined outcome or a predictable outcome. For 
science student, there are different principles that applies to the science world or in the science world. But for us as believers, we are considering the principle of thanksgiving. When you put a principle to work or you apply a principle, the outcome is predictable. If you understand what I said, say amen. So thanksgiving is a spiritual principle and when you practice it, the outcome is predictable. And we're going to be seeing that as we move on in this discussion. Someone here, an uncommon door that you have been knocking at and refuses to open will be open to you this season. Oh, come on. I am praying that for someone. I'm praying that in the name of Jesus Christ, as inspired by God, a door that you have been trying to open that has refused to open will be open to you on its own accord. And we're going to be saying how possible that will be because we are going to see the power of thanksgiving. The power of what? Are you still there? Second Corinthians 13 verse number 8. It says, for we can do nothing against what? The truth, but for the truth. Don't forget, we have seen that the princi principle, or the word principle means a basic truth that determines what? An action that also produces what? A predictable outcome. There is nothing you can do about it. When you violate the principles of life, or the principles of science, you can't expect to get the desired outcome. Is that true? The same thing applies to us children of God. There is nothing we can do about it. The word of the Lord says we should give thanks in what? In all circumstances. That is the truth of God's word. So whether you like it or not, are you following? God has admonished us, his people, to give thanks in how many circumstances? And it says, it is the will of God for us who are in what? In Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus or you are a believer in Christ Jesus, God expects you to give thanks in what? In all circumstances. Are you still there? Yes, Psalm 119 verse number 4, it says, the message version, it says, you, God, what? Prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Now in the context of our discussion, God has prescribed or had told us what we should do in all circumstances. And that is what? To give thanks. It is the standard of God. It is the law of God. If you will, it is the principle of God. Are you still there? Can I pray for someone who is part of this service? I see God doing something in your life that you didn't even pray for him for. Come on, I'm going to pray that again. I, I, I see God doing something in your life that is far beyond what you ask of him. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Note this morning as children of God, please, I'd like you to be attentive, that Thanksgiving is not a mere human concept or a religious exercise designed for the purpose of satisfying a routine yearly obligation or demand. I'm going to explain what that means. Thanksgiving is not something that we do because they said, uh-uh. It's not a religious exercise. It's not a human concept. It's not an ideal, are you following? Created by any mortal. No, it is God's will that we offer thanks to him. Amen. I said amen. amen. And we should do so in what? In all circumstances. So Thanksgiving is not a mere human concept. It's not a religious feast. It's not something that we do because, you know, someone said we should. No. It is a spiritual act. Someone says it's a spiritual act. Are you still there? Come on. Are you still there? Thanksgiving is an established spiritual act. And this art is practiced by believers that recognizes God's goodness is out of love and goodness. 
I'm going to say that again. Thanksgiving is a spiritual act. Let me repeat that if you heard what I said. And it is practiced by believers, children of God, that recognize God's goodness, God's mercy, God's love. You can't truly offer thanks to God until you are able to recognize who God is, what He has done, what we enjoy by His grace. I told someone a few days ago, if the Lord will open your eyes to so see the battles, He fights for you that you are not even aware of, I'm sure you will not cease giving him thanks. Oh, some persons are going to say, well, from what has happened, because of what has happened to me, I don't think I should offer thanks to God. If only your eyes were open to see what could have happened, but God stepped in. Can someone join me shout, thank you, Jesus? I have seen people have an attitude of, you know, because one thing happened, I'm not sure I'm going to be. Listen to this child of God. If the Lord had not been by our side. Someone here, wave your hand if you have a reason to say, God, thank you and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, wave your hands, irrespective of who is by your side and who is looking at you. Wave your hands and join me, shout, thank you, Jesus. So thanksgiving is a spiritual act. It's not a mere human concept designed so that every year we can come and then do the routine, you know, obligation. of No, no, no. It's a spiritual act. Someone says it's a spiritual act. And it's only matured believers that practice it. Baby believers, we find a reason to say, I don't think Thanksgiving is necessary this year. But someone who is part of this meeting who recognizes that your bread is not by a recharge card. That you woke up and you could walk with your two legs is not because you are better than others. Please again and again, can you shout thank you Jesus? Thank you Jesus! Are you still there this morning? Yes sir. Psalm 1 to 4 Verse number 1 to 8. Please, I'd like us to read it from the easy to reach version. It says, can we read together? What would have happened to us if the Lord had not been on our side? Tell us about it, Israel. What would have happened to us if the Lord had not been on our side? Go ahead. They would have swallowed us alive. Is that true? When they became angry with us. Their armies would have been like a flood washing over us, like a river drowning us. Shout thank you, Jesus, as we read on. Thank you, Jesus. Then let's go forward. Those proud people would have been like water rising up to our mouth and drowning us. Praise the Lord. He did not let our enemies tear us apart. I thought that is a good place to say good amen. He did not allow our enemies to what? Verse 7 now said what? We escaped like a bird from the net of a hunter. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And then he went further. The net broke and we escaped. Come on, personalize it. The net broke and I escaped. Say that again. The net broke and I escaped. What is a net? A trap. A trap. You and I possibly would have been in this meeting if not for the grace of God. Yes, Come on, let me get a weakness. Is that true? Yes, sir. The net broke and we escaped. And then verse number 8. Our hand came from the doctor. Came from our lawyers. It came from who? From the law. And who is the law? The one who made heaven and earth. Wave your hand and shout thank you Jesus this morning. You don't know what good head is until you fall ill. 
You don't know how this breath of life that you have, you can breathe in, take in oxygen, breathe out what? Carbon dioxide. You don't know what it is until you can breathe. Every child of God here, find a reason to shout, Thank you, Jesus. I wish I could tell the, the choir to rise up and give us a song so that we can dance. Come on, everyone in this meeting, you know, whether you are in the extension, wherever you are, shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor left around right, and tell the person, it has, been by the grace of God. it has been by the grace of God. Say that again if you really mean it. It has been by the grace of God. It has been by whose grace? Are you still there? Thanksgiving should be a joyful choice and add by believers as a means of expressing our gratitude to God. It should be a joyful choice. When you see believers who think that Thanksgiving is unnecessary because certain things happened, it shows the level of their spiritual maturity. And don't forget this, spiritual maturity is not something that you have because you have been in church for years. I've seen people in my life who have been in church for years. Still, they don't understand spiritual things or spiritual principles. Are you there? So Thanksgiving should be a joyful thing. A joyful thing. And it's a means for us to say, God, thank you. I traveled, you granted me journey mercies. I can sleep. I, can, I wake up. I can walk. I can breathe. I can talk. I can hear. Someone shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, thanksgiving is a means of expressing what? Our gratitude to who? To God. Psalm 118, 19 to 24. Are you still there? It says, open for me the gate of the righteous. And we enter and walk and give thanks to the Lord. Take note, the gate of the righteous is the gathering of God's people. It's not that someone has to coerce me or someone has to force me. Please open the gates for me. I am coming to say, God, thank you. Open it for me. I desire to come and say, God, thank you. Open the gates of the righteous. And I will enter. And what will I do? I will give thanks to the Lord. This is the gates of who? Of the Lord. Through which the righteous may enter. Are you there? 21. He said what? I will give you thanks. For you answered me. Who has God answered here? Amen. He said, you have become my salvation. The stone, the builders rejected. What happened to the stone? Has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this. Amen. And what happened? And it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this very day. Let us rejoice today. And what? Now, this is a declaration of someone who recognizes God's goodness. I told my wife yesterday evening before we went to bed, I said to her, there are people that wouldn't open their gate to me if not for grace. The stone, the builder, rejected. If you have ever been rejected here, and the Lord God graciously enabled you to become the celebrated. Shall I thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Now, people give thanks to God for different reasons. There are those who will say, Well, I don't think, please, I beg. Well, you're not right. If you know what Thanksgiving is. Are you there? Are you there? I pray for someone here. This Thanksgiving will be a new era for you. Amen. Thanksgiving is God's kingdom principle that agendas the following. So a few days ago, the Lord impressed in my heart. I won't have the time to share that today. He said, there are those who will give thanks because they keep postponing it. There are others who will tell themselves when certain things happen in their life, that's when they will give thanks. No, you're wrong. Thanksgiving, are you following? Yes, actually engenders uh, the things you are trusting God for to become a reality. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I can't feel you. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So what are the things 
that Thanksgiving engenders as a principle in God's kingdom. One, is a spiritual code that grants access into God's presence and privileges. Two, oh. somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you visit Asorok, Without you having the permission to do so, you will never be able to gain access. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Let me not even go to Asso Rock or the presidency. If you visit the government house of this state, if you are not on appointment and you have not been granted access, you can't see the governor. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. There are certain places you can enter until you have the access number. There are certain doors you can open until you have the access code. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Most doors today, in a scientific world, you must have an access card or you have a particular number. You have to dial the number for the door to be opened. So for us as believers, Thanksgiving is our spiritual code and it grants us access into God's presence and what? And privileges. Someone here, you will not stand at the door anymore. You know, when you don't have access, what you do is that you tell those who have access, eh, help me tell God. <laughs> tell him I'm standing by the door. I don't know how I can access him. Can you stretch your hand towards me this morning? I pray for someone here. You will enjoy your fellowship with God. Amen. You will enjoy an unhindered access to your creator. Amen. If, you, if, you, if you find access or you gain access into God's presence, can you imagine what you will enjoy? I pray for someone here. You will enjoy all that God has in store for you. Amen. You will enjoy what God can do. Amen. Psalm, 104, Psalm 100, verse number 4, the message version. See what, see what it says. See what it says. It says, enter with the password. Enter what? What is the password? Come on, most of you are not ready. What is the password? What do you mean by password? Something that grants you access. So to be able to enter into God's presence and enjoy the privileges of what God alone can do. One of those privileges is that he will heal you of sickness that mercy cannot heal. Mm, he will favor you that men will be attracted to favor you. Oh, can you say it better? Amen. Amen. There are privileges you enjoy if you can gain access. So it says, enter with a password Thank you. Make yourselves at home taking, talking what? Praise. Thank him. Worship him. Make yourself at home with God. Yesterday I gave someone a call and after we ended the conversation, the Lord said to me, praise the Lord, that I should tell the person to be more committed to him and to learn how to appreciate him. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. When you gain access into God's presence, of course, we all have access to God because he's our father, amen, amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ that has washed away our sins. There is no more holy of holies. We now have access to the father. But listen to this. If you are going to keep having that access and enjoying the privileges that goes with it, you must have the password of what? Oh, I'm glad that you know it. The password of what? King James Vachon say, enter his gate with what? And his court with what? How do you enter his gate? What will open the gates? I see the gates of heaven open to you. Amen. Are you still there? Yes, then uh, uh, Hebrews 4 verse number 16. Come on. This is so strong in my heart and I'm going to pray. it. Someone here, from today, something about you is going to change and men will notice it. They will notice that from today there is something about you and that will be as a result of the presence of God that will follow you from today. Amen. Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar was able to note or notice that there was something about him. The presence of God stands you out. The presence of God enables you to enjoy favor. Are you following? Even from those who hate you. The presence of God protects you from evil. Are you still there? So thanksgiving is our access code. It's a spiritual access code that grants us 
access into God's presence and the privileges that goes with it. Hebrews 4 verse number 16 says, can you read with me? Let us then approach God's throne of what? Let me pause to ask, how do you approach this throne of grace? With, with confidence. The confidence of sonship and you don't approach the throne of grace and say, oh God, I'm tired. I don't know why certain things happened in my life. I don't know why 23 were like this. Child of God, let me say this to you. There are certain events that do happen. If your eyes are open, you will know that behind this happening, there is something good coming. Come, am I talking to someone here? Yes, the Bible says, weeping may endure for what? But joy comes what? So when you are in the night and you are going through certain shakings and all of that, what strengthens you is that you know that it's not going to last forever. And how to move away from your weeping or from the so, uh, sad things that has occurred in your life is that you must possess the attitude of what? Of gratitude. I don't understand. Lord, I don't know why certain things are not working in my life. I don't know why certain things do happen, but I know that you are God. You are my God. You are in control. I'm going to offer you thanks because your word says in all things we should, we should give you what? Thanks. I, I am not even happy personally. Yes, my emotion is, is not, you know, it's not in the best state that can, that can possibly be, but however, your word says in all circumstances, I should give you thanks. So Lord, if you ask me to do so, I'm going to do so. Uh, my feelings might not agree, but I'm going to do so by faith. Do you know what? You are preparing yourself. Are you following? For what God alone can do. It can turn your life around. Am I communicating here? Are you still there? He said, let us approach God's grace, the throne of God's grace, uh, God's throne of grace with what? With confidence. What happens when, uh, when you approach with confidence? So that we may receive mercy. Find grace to help us what a privilege. You will find what? Then you will find what? Grace. If you have mercy and grace, what else do you need? Let someone with the loudest amen who is not in this service as though you just came to fulfill all righteousness receive this. From today, enjoy grace and mercy. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. From this day going forward, may you and your household enjoy mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. In your career, mercy and grace. Amen. In your marriage, mercy and grace. Amen. In your business, mercy and grace. Amen. In your finances, mercy and grace. Amen. So thanksgiving is our access code. It's our password into God's presence. And then when you gain access into his presence, you find mercy and grace. And mercy and grace are the two spiritual components that can turn the life of a man into a wonder. I pray for someone here. I don't know who is against you. I don't know what is against you. But one thing that will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ is that you will enjoy mercy and grace. Amen. Two, what Thanksgiving engenders as a spiritual principle. It puts a seal on our victory through Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving puts a seal on our victory through Jesus Christ. The Bible told us that everyone born of God, what? Overcome the word. This is the victory that overcomes the word, even what? Our faith. Now, what Thanksgiving does is that that victory which you have been given through Jesus Christ, the scripture told us in Romans that in all these things we are more than what? Conqueror. Now, a C means it is something that cannot be changed, it's something that cannot be reversed. Now, anytime you offer thanks to God, as an obedient child of God, obeying the principle of thanksgiving as we have been told in 1 Corinthians 5 verse number 18, that we should offer thanks to God in all circumstances, you put a seal on that very thing you thank God for. For example, any battle that you are in, if you can keep thanking God for it, you have secured your victory. Amen. You've sealed your victory. Amen. Can you say Amen. 2 Chronicles 20, verse number 21 to 22. Let's see what happened uh, there. 2 Chronicles is a familiar scripture, 22, uh, 20, 21 to 22. If you are seeing here, say amen. amen. Let's read together. Jehoshaphat encouraged the men and gave them what? Instructions. Then he had the temple singer stand up in what? In their special clothes to praise the Lord. They marched in front of the army and sang. Let's pause them. Some of you may not know what this place is saying. They marched in front of whose army or which army? 
armies that were coming to attack them. Can you imagine that? Armies were coming to attack Jehoshaphat and his people. The only thing Jehoshaphat did was to assemble singers to stand in front of the armies that were coming with weapons. I pray for someone here. You will be asleep and your victory will be announced. Amen. Don't say that amen like you are not here. You will be asleep, your victory will be announced. Amen. You will be in your office, your promotion will be signed. Amen. Come on, can you say better amen? amen. You will be writing an exam. God has already determined your astounding uh, position. Amen. Are you still there this morning? Armies were coming to attack the Israelites or the people of Judah. The battle was coming. All that Joseph had did was to say, let's give times. Wow. And when they did, let's, let's read that. Let's, let's continue. Say, they marched in front of who? Of the army and signed. Give thanks to who? His faithful love will last forever. 22. As they began to sing and to praise God, the Lord set an ambush for the army of Ammon that were coming to attack them. They were three armies in, together from what? Ammon, Moab, and Maxia who had come to attack Judah. What happened? The enemy was defeated. Lift up your two hands above your head. I see that sickness defeated. I see evil conspiracy against you defeated. Amen. For someone here, what is attacking that your business is defeated? Amen. But with what, with what weapon did they fight? Just thanking God. You see, maturity? Just thanking God. Say, I'm not happy. Oh, you are giving into the flesh. That is not how we fight. I love a song, you know, I don't have all the, all the words of the song. Say, this is how we fight. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. You know, you know when you get to this level of spiritual maturity, people will be wondering, why are you not troubled? Because I understand that when you are faced with a battle you can handle, you can understand, do what? Give thanks. It works. It has worked for me severally. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the weapon of our warfare, they are not. But they are mighty through who? Through God. In the pulling down. Four kingdoms were coming against Jehoshaphat and his people. After the Lord had spoken to Jehoshaphat, they had prayed. And he said, the battle is not yours. The battle is my share the Lord. Jehoshaphat said, now that the Lord has taken over the battle, though we can still see the battle, we can still see the army is coming. We can see the enemy is coming. Let's begin to praise. Let's begin to offer thanks to God. I pray for someone in this season of our Thanksgiving as a church family. I see the battles you don't understand. The battle you can't handle. I see God giving you victory. Amen. Victory over infections. Amen. Victory over barrenness. Amen. What is a seal? Don't forget we said Thanksgiving as a spiritual principle engenders a seal on our victory. A seal. What is a seal? Something that confirms, ratifies, or makes secure. Guaranteed, assured. When you say something has a seal, it means that that thing is secure. It is settled. It's a done day. Someone shout it without any reservation. My victory is secured. My victory is secure. So you secure your victory. Now, can you can imagine you, you ill, you went to the hospital, you treated, things are still not working, you don't understand what to do anymore, just give in to what? Thanks. Just give in to thanksgiving. Just give in to saying, God, I thank you. I don't understand, but you do understand all things. Are you still there? Yes, sir. Are you still there? Yes, sir. May I also ask you this question? Does it make any sense for people who had done nothing, flogged, and throw into the prison only for them to start singing and dancing and praising God in prison. But when they did, the prison door opened on its own because God came down and intervened in the affairs of their lives. I pray for someone here. You will enjoy divine intervention this season. Amen. Another thing that Thanksgiving does, 
as a spiritual principle or as, or as God's kingdom principle, it brings the blessings of multiplication or increase. I see the little you have, God will grant you the grace for increase. Yeah. Deuteronomy 1 verse 9 by 11, it says, And may God, the God of your fathers, keep it up and multiply you another thousand times. Bless you just as he promised. Someone shout, increase, increase three times. Increase, increase, increase. Who owns the increase? You. May the Lord increase you a thousand times. It doesn't matter the level you are in now. The Lord will increase you. The Lord is not done with you yet. Oh, Rabo Shagabo. I said the Lord is not done with you yet. Increase is coming to your family. Increase is coming to that business. How? By always having the art of what? Of gratitude. Lord, thank you. I am not where I should be yet. But I'm no longer where I have always been. I am on my way to the top. Amen. I'm on my way to more than enough. Amen. An example of that is in the book of John 1, John 6 rather, 1 to 3. Are you there? The Bible says, can, can we read together? Sometime after that, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of, what? of Galilee. That is the Sea of Tiberia. What happened? And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Now, we may not be able to finish the scripture. The Bible said, when Jesus saw the multitude, when he saw the multitude, if it's not by 11, we are told that all that they had was two loaves of bread and five fishes among thousands of people. Jesus could have just sat back and said, well, I don't have, what I have is not enough. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Let me tell you this. If you are a grumbly Christian and a, murmur, a Christian that murmurs or complains, you will never have an attitude of gratitude. Because in this world, there is always a reason for you to complain. Is that true? Yes, sir. In this world, there will always be a reason for you to murmur. But when you know what thanksgiving is, offering thanks to God in all circumstances, you can turn your life around. If you choose to murmur, you choose to complain, you choose to have reasons why you should not be happy, why you can't offer thanks to God, you will have more than enough. But someone in this meeting this morning, I want you, if you believe, say, I choose to offer thanks to God. I choose to offer thanks to God. I choose to be grateful. Are you still there? From what was not enough, Jesus lifted it up and did what? And gave thanks. And when he gave thanks, he gave what was not enough to his disciples. And the Bible said, as they began to distribute it, the thing multiplied. And from what was not enough, they had more than enough. Someone here, more than enough will be your reality. How will you have more than enough? Gratitude. Hey, Pastor, if I just give gratitude, uh, I will just have more than enough. You'll be amazed. How people you don't know, praise the Lord. Amen. You know why some persons will look and say, what are you saying, Pastor? Does that really work? Because you've never experienced it before. But for some of us, we know how God provides. If you have ever enjoyed divine provision, can you shout thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. So, Thanksgiving brings the blessings of multiplication and increase. Then another thing it does, it activates the power that makes resurrection possible. It activates the power that makes resurrection possible. Now when you hear the word resurrection, what goes through your mind is Jesus. Of course, Jesus resurrected from the grave uh, after three days. Are you still there? But resurrection is an English word. And you are going to be saying very soon. Because I'm trusting God that for someone here, your business will resurrect. Yeah. The Bible told us in John 11, verse number 41, that Jesus stood by the grave of who? Of Lazarus. Now look at the place where Jesus was offering thanks. When people stand by the grave of their loved ones, what they usually do is to go and cry, put a flower there. But Jesus stood by the grave of Lazarus, and what he did was to what? Give thanks. There are people going to tell you, well, I suffered the loss, the loss of my loved ones. Something happened. I suffered the loss of business. I lost my job. Do you want God to restore? Do you want God to bring healing? Do you want God to be your comforter? Do you want God to be your strength? Do you want God to be your provider? Do you want God to be to you what no man can be to you? Learn to always say what? Thank you. 
Now, I've said this humorously. You can imagine if our breath was to be recharged with rechargeable card or recharge card, how much will you spend? Let's assume that MTN is the one in charge. Let's assume that MTN is the one in charge or Glow or Airtel. How much would they sell the charge card for a day to sustain your life? Just assume. Maybe 1,000? And one time they will tell you they are not selling so that you can die. Are you still there? You have oxygen? <laughs> Free of charge? You can, oh, come on. Everyone in this congregation, wherever you are sitting, shout with a loud voice, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If not for anything that you can breathe, you can hear me now. You are still in the land of the living. It's enough reason for you to say, God. And that's what we're going to be doing on Sunday. We're going to say, God, thank you. You are good. You know, can I say this to you? The devil also don't want you to thank God because he knows it's a weapon. He knows it's a principle. He knows that through it, God will taunt us. So we give you enough reason. If you are dancing now, people will now say, uh, he didn't pain you. What happened? You didn't feel it. Child of God, even now that you are sad, they are even suspecting you that you may be the cause. There is nothing you do among men that they will have their own faction. Are you still there? Stop dressing well. They will say, resection has come in. Start dressing well. They say you are showing off. Don't smile. They said something is wrong with you. Start smiling. They say you are laughing at them. So what will you do? Choose to be who God made you. Are you still there? There are people who allow the opinions of men to control them. And the voice of the devil. It will surprise you. And I pray that don't happen. You will hear someone. Or you will see someone. Son, the devil will say, you want to go? Your market got burned. You want to go? Stay back at home so that they know the team paying you. Stay back at home. Will it change the situation? The God who can turn your life around and say, come, offer thanks. Give thanks to me. It doesn't matter what has happened to you, sweetheart. I am your God. When Jesus did, bread multiplied. Someone here, you will enjoy multiplication. Now, Jesus was by the grave of Lazarus. When, in fact, the Bible said when he, he told Mary and Martha, show me where you laid his body. The Jews actually followed him because they thought he was going there to cry. When he got there, they said, take away the stone. So they took away the stone. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus in the midst of everybody weeping, he said, Father, I thank, I thank you. I'm sure the kind of people, they say, this man is insane. He ought to be crying. But when he said, thank you, Lazarus, who had died, I see that your business, as you offer thanks for that dead business, it will come back alive. That business will resurrect. Yeah. So the Bible says, so they took away what? The stone. Then Jesus what? Looked up and said, Father, it's a pity. It's a pity, Father. It's a pity. It's a pity. No, 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 no. Oh, God, it's a pity. God, God, if I can see you, what I will tell you, you will believe it. No. I've been to places where people suffer the loss of their loved ones. Let's be, let's be sincere. To suffer the loss of your loved one is not a joke. It's painful. Oh, when I experienced one some time ago, wow, it's not easy. But where will you get your comfort from? Where will you get your strength from? The one who can hear you, the one who can help you, said, give me thanks. Are you wiser than him? You said, no. You know, the way it is, you know, I, I won't. You know, there are some persons that love sympathy, people to sympathize with them. And I thank God for people that I know who have had challenges. Your attitude of gratitude has actually shown to people that you know your God. Because some persons will expect you to sleep at home. I was told of a man who died. Three days after he died, the wife died too. Yes, because the wife mourned and mourned and went into depression and then, and then she died. Now, I don't know what may have been responsible for that. But if you are not careful, are you still there? You put yourself in a state where uh, it will be difficult for you to recover from what has happened to you. You know, I've been to places where you people say things like, oh, he, he would have been the one to die. He would have been the one to die. And I've asked them, hold on, who would have died? Is it you? You don't know how to mourn. Shut up, praise the Lord Jesus. Death is inevitable. The only reason why you are now still alive is not because we are good. It's because God is what? Good. Do you know how many things could have happened to you last night that God averted? Because of us, he neither sleep nor what, nor slumber. He stood at the door and the devil was coming with the spirit of death. And he said, where are you going? He said, death. He said, girl, 
it's not yet time. Yet you are crying and feeling. Someone here who believe what I've just said, shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So they took away the stone, then Jesus looked up and what? And said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And when he have done that, what happened? He said, Lazarus! Can I pray for someone here? Whatever was dead in your life is resurrected. Amen. I pray that for someone who understands. I said, whatever was dead in your life will resurrect. Amen. On the third day, Jesus resurrected. Jesus is not the only one that resurrects. Your business will resurrect. Amen. Your career will resurrect. Amen. Your favor will resurrect. Amen. Your children will resurrect. Amen. Their destinies will resurrect. Amen. The word resurrection means... The act of causing something that, that has ended or be forgotten or lost to exist again. It also means to be used again. Child of God, I pray for someone here. Your business will resurrect again. Your greatness will resurrect again. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is my prayer for everyone who is part of this meeting. Whatever seems to be like a dead situation, Everyone has said there is nothing that anybody can do about it. Just key to the spirit of thanksgiving. The spirit of what? Please, you should not do it as a demand. Maybe a demand is placed on you by someone. No! But do it as a spiritual act. As a spiritual principle. You know that God says in all circumstances, give thanks. It is the will of God for us who are in Christ Jesus. And as you do so, are you still with me? Yes, as you do so with a sincere heart, as you do so with a joyful heart, as you do so recognizing how God has helped you, there are those who will say to themselves, well, 2020 has been a tough year. Yes, indeed, it has been a tough year, but it has been the year that God has been gracious. Yes. I love the way you said amen. I said it has been the year that the Lord has been gracious to us. Yes. So dearly beloved, recognize the power of thanksgiving knows what, know what it is know what it is know that it's a principle that when you offer thanks to God the outcome is predictable the scripture said as they began to offer thanks to God the enemy were defeated I see sickness defeated in your life yeah. can I say this before I pray the devil will come against you yes he will because he knows that when you sincerely come to say to God thank you he can't hold you back. He can't stop God from intervening in your life. So he will give you several reasons why you shouldn't. He will tell you, look at this. School fees has not been paid. House strength has not been paid. This one has not been paid. Child of God, no man can sustain his life by his own strength. Your sustainer is God. Your source is God. Your strength is God. So submit to what he says. Do what he says and leave the rest for him. He says, submit to God. And by this, prosperity will come to you. What is prosperity? The Lord God will cause things in your life that seems to be out of place. They will begin to fall in place. Amen. Can I hear a better? Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving is not man's wisdom. Thanksgiving is not God's idea. Thanksgiving is also not a religious act. But if you approach it that way, you will limit the power of thanksgiving. But if you approach it with the mind of Yes, God asked us, his people, to offer thanks. And I'm going to do it prepared. I remember growing up as a young man, when we used to call it harvest. My parents used to prepare it for harvest. My dad would take time to prepare the best plantain, the best year in his band, and so many other things. And I remember that when my dad is going to harvest, as we used to call it back then, we always help him to carry the big, biggest yam, the biggest plantain, and because that was all they had. They were farmers. And I have always seen how God, through that, began to intervene in their farming business. I see God intervening in that your business. Yeah. What you need to do is to open up your heart. Recognize the greatness of God. Recognize that God is not a man. Recognize that God is a God who is the reason for all that we are. Except the Lord had not been by what? By our side. We would have been devoured. Perhaps you will be here today. Perhaps I will not be here today. But it's by the Lord's grace, his mercy, and his goodness that we are not consumed. Will you stand this morning?
Lay your hand on yourself and say, Lord, I have a reason to give you thanks. I think you should better say, say, oh God, I have reasons. So I have reasons to say thank you. Because you are the reason for all that I am and for all that I have. Sincerely from my heart, thank you for who you are, what you've done, and all that you will do. If you truly meant what you said, say good amen. This is my prayer for everyone who is part of this meeting. Please still lay your hand on yourself. The evil one comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But you are a victor. He, he does that with so much deception. I pray that this week of our Thanksgiving, as a church family, may the Lord guide you. May the Lord be with you. May the grace to recognize all that the Lord has been to you, all his goodness, may it come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you will be like Abe and not Cain. That your thanks will be acceptable to God in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that this week the Lord will surprise you. Amen. The Lord will increase you. Amen. Nothing will distract you. Amen. Nothing will hinder you. Amen. Can I hear someone who is receiving this with the best Amen. amen. That they will thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. two or three are gathered, he is there in their midst. And that is why we are happy to have you in our gathering this Sunday. This is Ministry of Revolution at Kewan Branch and this is on that blissful Sunday service. Please listen to today's announcements. As you already know, our midweek service holds by 5pm every Wednesday. And in case you can't make it here, you don't have to miss out because we are streaming via our Facebook page at MOP at Kewan or you could visit any of the sub-branches closest to you at Ubioko and Ulemon sub-branch. In this church, we have been having a series of programs and one special program we've always been having is our parental intercession. On the 28th of October, we're going to have another edition of our parental intercession. Parents, guardians, come and pray for the future and the destiny of your child. It's tagged Child of Destiny and on the 28th of October by 5 p.m. You should not miss out because your children need your prayers.